Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for uh, attending our web meeting this morning. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and start our presentation. Uh, let's just start off with uh, a few introductions. My name's Bashrat Din. Uh, please feel free to call me Bash. I'm the Managing Director of ZumZum Limited. Uh, and as a cloud computing consultancy, uh, we're one of the first Google Premier SMB partners in the UK. Um, I'm joined this morning um, by with Brian Coffey uh, from Google. So I'll let Brian take a moment just to introduce himself. Hello, Brian. Uh, good morning, Bash. Uh, thanks for inviting me along. Uh, as the slide says, I manage Google Apps for SMEs in the UK. Superb. Well, what, what we're going to do um, this morning is that we're going to cover a short presentation that Brian's going to talk through the proposition of how Google Apps allows you to work in the future and what that work is going to actually look like. Uh, we'll then give you a, a, a description of the suite of applications that uh, make up the Google Apps proposition, uh, and then what we'll do is we'll dive into uh, a demo of the actual product and, and end with um, some Q&A at the end of that. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Brian. Great. Thanks again. Um, yeah, so uh, what we're trying to do really today is, is sort of differentiate ourselves from, from the way a lot of companies are working at the moment. Um, so we see uh, when myself and Bash, uh, who, who I'd work with quite often, when we're talking to companies, we do see um, a lot of trends coming through in terms of, of, of uh, the way work, the workplace and the work environment is going. And you can see a few of them here. So, for example, uh, if we're looking at from uh, local to global, you know, in the past, we used to be restricted to working with companies that, you know, were primarily in the same location and they spoke the same language. Now we're seeing a trend that we can work with anyone. Uh, when we look uh, look at uh, from moving from alone to together, it needs to be very difficult to share information and collaborate beyond the four walls of the business. Technology almost got in the way of collaboration. Um, now we can work across companies. Um, and speed is, is obviously another big thing that, that we're seeing now is, is you know, while we, we used to believe that the big guys led the markets and they always won, we now know that time to market and ability to adapt uh, wins out. Uh, so if we move on to the next slide, uh, we can see if we just have a quick look at, at a couple of these uh, depths uh, or trends, I should say, in more depth. Um, you know, this prediction by Thomas Frieden has, has pretty has very quickly come true. Uh, we now see that people from all over the world are competing for the same role since they no longer need to rely on language or location and can rely in, instead on their abilities. Move on to the next uh, trend uh, together. We can see that Linda, Linda Grattan um, uh, from the London School of Economics, she recognized that uh, you know, businesses will thrive based on their ability to network ac across global ecosystems of businesses. Um, you know, this suggests that you know, it's these networks that determine the value of an organization as much as anything. And finally, the, uh, if we look at uh, the speed, uh, HTC is a good example of, of, of a, a company that's in a, uh, in a marketplace that, that values speed and the consumer desire for continual innovation um, it allows them to, you know, release new devices more than six times a year, you know, six to ten times a year. And we, when we compare that to, say, another industry, say, the, the, you know, a car manufacturing, uh, you know, who would release new, you know, when they release new vehicles, we can see that how quickly, uh, depending on what market you're on, speed it plays a very important factor. Um, so these trends, global together and speed, um, they're leading us into a kind of a new way of uh, working and, and because of that we need a new way of thinking and, and really a new set of tools. Um, and that's where uh, Google Apps comes in. So the past was really about personal productivity, you know, 
well, you know, talented people working in cubicles by themselves, um, you know, where their ideas might not, never really see the light of day. Whereas we see the new way of working is about, uh, you know, working across historical boundaries of location, language, and actually within the company even. And uh, this is made possible by the cloud, and it's, uh, it, you know, it's made possible by, by Google Apps as well. So, uh, you know, if we go back to a couple of the, the trends we were talking about and, and, and how they might fit into to how, how we work. Um, you know, for example, together we've moved away from personal productivity um, on our, you know, within the company to a global collaboration across companies. Um, when we look at any time, you, you know, work no longer happens nine to five. Work happen when it needs to happen, you know, across the globe, around the clock, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're always switched on to work. It just means that if something does come up, you're able to respond to it. Um, anywhere, you know, we're not lo we're no longer chained to the office or it's expensive VC equipment. You can work from anywhere, um, so you don't have to worry about purchasing a lot more hardware to cope with the scale of the company. And then, of course, any device, uh, you know. A lot of companies, if their staff aren't sitting at their desk within a particular office, they can't be productive, whereas uh, with, with cloud computing and Google Apps, it doesn't matter what device you're on. Move on. Um, and as I say, so uh, the cloud makes this possible today. And, uh, sorry, there. I think someone is coming through. Uh, it's not muted, but uh, I'll, I'll go on anyway. Um, so if you move on to the next slide here. Um, so as I say, cloud computing makes it possible today. So does uh, uh, Google um, Apps. Um, so we have powerful and intuitive web-based tools that uh, you know help you work together from anywhere. Um, Obviously, we have Android smartphones and Chromebooks, uh, which you know enhance the user experience, and uh, you know while we're leaving the burden of managing complex devices. And then Google App Engine and our geospatial platform allow you to build applications um, either for yourself or if you want to sell them on, you can to other Google Apps customers. You can go into the Google Apps Marketplace and see other products. Um, so again. We'll have a quick look to see how these fit in. You can see that across these trends and, and being able to work on any team, place, time, or device, Google Apps allows you to do this. Um, so we have uh, more than uh, 5 million businesses at the moment. We're signing up about 5,000 users per day. Um, and uh, if you want to have a look, these are some of the larger companies. If you want to have a look for you know, companies of your size or your industry in particular, we do have a, a very intuitive case study. Uh, if you just look on the Google Apps website, you'll, you'll be able to, to read some material based or, you know, more relevant to yourself. So if, we're, if we do talk about what some of the customers that have moved to Google and what, what they're interested in and, and some of their experiences, you know, in, in terms of a biz the business end of it or a management side of it, uh, you know, things that they've noticed of, or, or trends that they've noticed is, say, the speed of, of Google Apps and, you know, such as Delta Hotels who reduced their end-to-end -end, end -end budgeting process by 30%. Uh, Synram talks about focus and, and illustrated it by refocusing IT resources on business critical projects and not necessarily just spending time on maintaining their their current uh, IT setup. And finally, McClatchy talked about productivity, which, you know, and, and really spoke about and highlighted the collaborative nature of Google Apps. Uh, what, we try, what we also pride ourselves on, though, with Google Apps is that, you know, we build our applications with the user in mind. So it's not so much the business process, it's with the user in mind. And, and a lot of the feedback we get from, from users uh, it's, it's quite positive. Um, so we look at uh, Roberto Cavalli um, talked about creativity and, and experiencing uh, the satisfaction they experienced um, because they were able to be their employees were be able, were able to be a lot more creative and, and innovative uh, with their work. Um, adoption where old uh, employees wondered why they hadn't adopted Google Apps sooner, and then finally inclusiveness. Uh, Brady outlining, you know, how Google Apps brought 
teams together across language barriers and time zones. Um, so we may as well just have a quick look of, of what Google Apps is. So if you want to move on to the next slide there, Bash. I mean, Bash is going to demo these, so I won't spend too long. Um, these are, would be some of the more uh, uh, popular applications. Um, so Gmail is our intuitive and powerful email. It, you know, some of you may have the consumer version of it. Uh, you know, there's, we have hundreds of millions of users on that already. Uh, and what it allows you to do is really choose how you want to communicate, be it sort of good email, chat, call, uh, video, or video conferencing. Uh, Google Docs is our real-time sharing and uh, editing uh, productivity suite. Makes collaboration as easy as creation, and you can see the edits happening in real time. We'll show that a bit later. And the other side of that is it's not on the slide; it's Google Drive. But again, we'll we'll talk about that later. Calendar is designed for you know individuals and teams. You can create as many calendars as you want, and and team or project calendars, and just overlay them on each other as as you, as you as you need them. Uh, Google Sites allows you to organize your content into project sites or an overall intranet for the whole company. Um, it's very easy to just uh, create a site for, uh, quite quickly. And Google Plus will be one of the more recent applications, um, so it you know, allows you to share and build relationships across uh, your business and, and throughout the ecosystem of your customers, your suppliers, and your partners. Um, and within that also is, is the video conferencing software, so you can, uh, you can have up to 10 people on a video conference and be sharing your screen with each other. Uh, so, as I, you know, in the past, I'm sure a lot of well, a lot of companies that we, certainly I speak to, they use you know traditional software to work primarily with people inside the company at a physical office between nine and five, and using their personal uh, computer. Uh, whereas Apps enables you to work in, a, in sort of a newer way uh, by allowing to work across uh, across all these, as I said before, historical boundaries. So any time, any place, any device. Um, I haven't gone through everything just yet, um, but uh, I, uh, Bash is going to do a quick, uh, is going to do a demo after this, which will probably answer a few more questions on, on what it looks like. Thanks very much for that uh, introduction there, Brian. Uh, I guess I should just uh, mention to um, all attendees, um, we've put you on mute just for the comfort of everybody. As and when you get some questions, please look for the chat window um, in the WebEx meeting center. Go ahead and type any questions there. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna move on to just a brief um, overview of the Google Apps Suite, and then we'll go at a fairly uh, rapid rate through the demonstration. And you'll understand that uh, in terms of um, the amount of functionality, the depth and breadth of capabilities that exist um, in Google Apps. So, Brian highlighted some of the main functionality there. Um, and I'm going to show you a, a, another slide with a little bit more detail of the, the complete suite of applications. And, and this transition to the cloud, um, of course, also considers the fact that you will probably have existing on-premise systems. And Google Apps um, in this single fee also includes a set of tools for integration to your on-premise systems. Um, whatever directory system that you're using, um, as long as it's LDAP compliant, and more than likely that's probably going to be Microsoft Active Directory for storing and managing your users. So it, it, if you do have some legacy systems there, then of course Google's not expecting you to simply abandon those and, and migrate to the cloud. You know, that, that's going to be an evolution. So once you embrace cloud computing in the future, you'll probably be displacing those legacy systems. But in the short term, you'll probably want to link to them, uh, including right the way to the desktop. So as far as client connectivity is concerned, then although we're going to concentrate on this, um, the magic with Google Apps happens inside the browser. That's really the innovation that how much so much work and productivity be, can be delivered directly inside the browser. We do respect the fact that there's going to be certain situations or certain users that justifiably will want to carry on using um, PC products 
um, like Outlook or maybe Mac products like a local mail client. So um, a lot of this functionality can again connect to on-premise systems like Outlook or uh, indeed your mobile devices, but like such as BlackBerry. The, the mobile connectivity in, in Google Apps is extremely powerful. There's some wonderful uh, controls there. That's more an administrator tool. We're not going to show you any of that this morning. Rest assured, um, you know, whether you're using BlackBerry or Windows Mobile, Android, uh, an iOS device from Apple, you're going to find the connectivity you need to make sure that all of your work can be done from your, your telephone or your tablet device. Um, this cost is an extremely aggressive cost point, um, £33 per user uh, per annum. It's a subscription-based model, um, so of course you can scale your business and add users on a pro rata basis as you're going throughout the year uh, and on your annual renewal reduce that as well. Um, so breaks down to something like only £2.75 uh, per user per month. Uh, and one of the uh, amazing aspects of that as well is that putting your IT infrastructure on the Google platform, you're then provided a 99.9% .9 service level availability. Um, very few organizations could dream of having that kind of availability on internal systems. And just given the amount of patches and updates to software and potential failures and, and scheduled maintenance uh, that you would do on your internal systems, uh, this 99.9% .9 service level availability, which Google is exceeding, um, does not include any scheduled downtime. So there should be no reason that you can't access your application anytime, anywhere. And one of the other, um, I think, um, things that um, surprise many people is that this cost also includes a 24 by 7 technical support agreement directly with Google support. Um, so for an administrator, um, if there are any issues, then you have a telephone number and the ability to contact Google and log your cases and have those uh, resolved as well. So that's one of those misconceptions that really needs to be dispelled that uh, you can't talk to Google. Of course, when you're a paid customer, you get the service level agreement and the telephone support. If you're one of the 350 million or so Gmail users that are using it for free, then of course, there's, there's no support on that. So it's quite important to distinguish between uh, ad sponsored products and corporate users that are using Google Apps for business that, of course, expect uh, service um, to go along with the product as well. There is an additional add on um, for email archiving, e discovery, and um, compliance, and called Google Apps Vault. Um, so if you have any industry regulations or if you've not put measures in place to protect your business against the risk of litigation, um, any kind of HR issues or customer contractual issues or suppliers, whereby you will probably need to bring email as evidence in a court of law, then the ideal solution for that is Google Apps Vault. And it's a really easy add-on to add to Google Apps for business. And again, it's 3.30 per user per month or on an annual basis, it's it's £33 per user per annum. So you'll see that Google Vault there at the bottom um, of the um, tools that are available um, within the Google Apps suite. The topmost reason people consider switching uh, from on-premise systems is to get a more reliable email service um, and get away from limited quotas. You know, gone are the days that I'm being forced by my IT department to archive or delete emails simply because I filled up my Outlook or my Exchange server quota. And that constant battle and friction between myself and IT who have to keep that system running with limited resources. Um, and me as a user who's generating infinitely more content on a day-to-day -day basis and sending receiving emails, and I want to store them forever. Um, that driver was really to get a more productive, um, a better inbox, um, and a more reliable email service. And then you discover a bunch of tools um, that really start to change the way that you approach communication, particularly as 
I was using many of these tools in my personal day-to-day um, -day life, like instant messaging through Skype, perhaps even doing video calls through Skype, and realizing that in Google Apps for Business, I can be uh, even faster in responding to um, communications by switching to instant messaging or going into a real-time um, video call, whether that's one-to-one -one or one-to-many. You're going to see um, some of that functionality here that we're going to show you that you can choose how to communicate with customers or suppliers or, or colleagues. Uh, creating groups and being able to um, create my own distribution list, being able to share content with groups without ever having to ring IT to set up this kind of functionality. Again, freeing up IT to concentrate on strategic um, projects while empowering me as a user and you as users to be able to go off and perform the tasks that you want without ever considering uh, how long is it going to take to actually get this done. Um, and even the calendar, um, finding some amazing functionality inside the calendar, the overlay functionality that you're going to see, not only managing my own calendars, but being able to create calendars ad hoc, ad hoc whether they're project-based calendars or customer calendars, viewing colleagues' calendars, and almost turning this into a very, very powerful scheduling system as well. And, and also, we saw the brand Google Docs on that slide. Um, it's under the umbrella of Google Drive, which is an online cloud storage service. Uh, for those of you that maybe have um, used or seen Dropbox in the past, which is a consumer-type product, then Google brings this online storage um, to businesses through the Google Drive brand, all included inside um, Google Apps for Business. That gives you a, an immediate five gigabyte of storage for free. So you know, I can put in 25 gigabytes of email in my huge Gmail inbox. I can store 25 gigabytes of any kind of file type. Sorry, five gigabytes of any kind of file type in Google Drive. And we're going to show you the ability to create spreadsheets, presentations, w uh, word processing documents, all inside the browser and only have one document that we can all work on and collaborate um, in real time. And this gives me the wow factor. Every time um, that I use this, I think about the old days of sending multiple versions of documents and now working in a world where there's only one real version of that document and we all have the latest version and collaborate in real time uh, always is a massive productivity game. Uh, and again, respecting the fact that there may be some business processes or certain uh, business reasons why users might want to continue using um, desktop products like Microsoft Office. Um, and in this world, Google has an offer called Google Cloud Connect. Again, we're not going to demonstrate this this morning. We're going to show and convince you that you can achieve um, most of the things that you've done on your desktop inside the browser by using the Google productivity tools. No need to either buy desktop software products or remain tied to a particular PC with your software. But if that's what you really want to do, you can use that to um, create content and Google brings the magic of collaboration to Microsoft Office and even Microsoft hasn't done that. So that's through this add-on called Google Cloud Connect. Uh, and one of the things that excites many, many businesses is the ability to create websites and not necessarily websites for public-facing websites, but internal intranet sites, project sites, team sites, and more importantly, sites that you can share and collaborate with customers or share content with suppliers in a easy to use, you're going to see something that is easy to use as a word processor. You can create, add content, manage and delete sites and never have to ring an IT person, and all of that is hosted on the Google infrastructure, all included in that um, single price. And as we said, if you want to protect all of that, then the roadmap is that Google Vault will protect all of that in a secure place. So if you accidentally delete it, we need to bring that content as evidence in a court of law, Google Vault will um, allow you to do that. And what, once you've got that bug for working in the cloud, then what you will start to question is, should we continue to invest in upgrading hardware and software on-premise, or is there another cloud-based application that could solve our problems that we can easily plug into our Google Apps platform? Uh, and that marketplace is called the Google Apps Marketplace. So you know, just type that into Google, 
you're going to find a search page, the Google Ads Marketplace, uh, just like consumer stores. Uh, however, only system administrators are able to shop here. And not only can you find tactical add-ons like expense sheets, time sheets, um, but you can find full-blown business applications so that you can deploy in a matter of a few clicks. An administrator can test it. If you're satisfied, roll it out to other users. If you're not, then uh, remove that from your system, as you'd expect in other app stores as well. You can see the ratings and reviews of other um, customers as well. So um, extremely transparent there as well. So let's switch over um, to a Google Apps um, demonstration. Let's just hide some of this out of the way. For those of you that have used uh, Gmail, you'll notice this is a familiar Gmail interface. The slight difference being that we've got our own branding with our own logo, and it's using our own domain name. The rest you're going to see the familiar Google bar across the top, which gives us access to the other applications uh, that we've talked about that make up the suite of Google Apps. And any third-party applications that the administrator has installed for me um, are available to me. You know, here we've got expense sheets um, or other kinds of applications the administrator has made available to me as an end user. Um, of course, I can continue to have things like folders here over on the left-hand side. Uh, and we're going to discuss the difference between the Google terminology of labels versus your, your static folder. And over here on the right-hand side, what I've got is a list of people that I'm connected to uh, through my chat interface. And here I can see Bashrat Din is offline, but of course, Brian uh, available and online as well. And of course, as a search company, you'd fully expect Google to have the best search capabilities um, in the industry. So uh, that was uh, extremely fast, milliseconds it actually took. And as soon as I type in the keyword, you'll notice that not only does it find um, emails from the user pool, but anywhere in the content of emails where the keyword matches, then of course that content turns up, we can see here this email has been presented to me because that keyword appears in uh, the search results that match my criteria as well. And at the bottom, you'll notice here that not only is it just email, but it's also documents and Google Sites that match that search criteria. So this paradigm of create, file, and find was extremely brave, very frustrating, wasted a huge amount of time to diligently put in emails into folders and never being able to find them on PC products uh, like Microsoft Outlook that I'd used for over a decade. And then come to the Google world. And of course, as I said, I can continue to sort and file all of my emails, but the fastest way normally to find them is to perform a quick search. Um, so you'll notice that, of course, when I'm looking at these emails, that the emails appear in different folders. Those folders, the Gmail terminology for that, of course, is labels. And the beauty of this is that when I look at that email, that email could actually be tagged with multiple labels and exist only once. There is only one set of that data, and I can go to any one of those folders at any time. And of course, it's simply a search result that says it must equal label demo. So when I'm storing and finding information, I can quickly tag it uh, with another label. Let's say we want to add demo to that one and apply, and all of a sudden, a new label is added to this. So I can tag it with multiple labels, whether it's customer or supplier or Paul's name or an internal reason, and then when I'm searching or finding that, I can find that very quickly, but also it serves as a visual alert in my inbox. Of course, I'm not necessarily going to manually tag uh, all of those emails. Uh, what I might decide to do is create automatic tagging rules. So here you'll notice that I can create a filter rule, whether it's based on emails that arrive from Paul or subject matter or keyword in that document. In this example, we're going to say if it comes from Paul, 
uh, let's decide that we're going to apply a label to it. Uh, and I can choose either one of my existing labels or very quickly create a new label and let's call it for it some some dot biz or some some and either nest it under an existing folder so you can have a hierarchical structure of labels or indeed leave it uh, on its own. It, the system is clever enough to say that there are there are 20 existing conversations that match this criteria. Do you want to tag all of them with that label as well and go yes? And now all of a sudden, all of those communications from Paul, um, I've just simply added uh, a new label on the left-hand side, and I could decide to change the color of that if I wanted to uh, and give it more um, visual appeal. Whenever in my inbox I get any content uh, from Paul, then of course it will automatically be tagged with that label Paul. So again, a, a, an easy way to store and process uh, emails from an individual you can see here, Paul. The other thing that I find is a massive productivity gain is that you'll notice that these emails have got numbers next to them. Uh, and a lot of email clients are now trying to emulate how Gmail uh, innovated in this idea of conversation view. Um, a huge time saver again. Uh, here I can see there are four emails. Here I can see five emails. So when I'm looking at this conversation, all the emails that relate to that conversation uh, based on the subject line are actually grouped together. Um, and whenever a new email arrives in my inbox, all the historical emails are actually brought together as well. So it saves me having to search my inbox. Uh, and more importantly, when there's a long thread of email communications going on, I can quickly scan the emails if I want to expand all of them. Then obviously I can see how the conversation evolved and how it's got uh, to this final conclusion. And I can then, of course, store that email away. And whenever I need to find them, I can get it all together. So let's take perhaps uh, another example here. Uh, find this email. What you'll notice here um, is something called the person gadget as well, which this particular contact that we're looking at, Rashad Din, I can see uh, what they're posting on Google Plus. And Google Plus is extremely powerful, <coughs> excuse me, since it can be implemented as a internal communication tool in social networking product rather than just posting publicly. Uh, so I can see what's being posted on Google Plus. I can see some profile information about this individual. I can see emails that I've had from this individual or documents that have been shared uh, from that person. So I get a good overview of our relationship there as well. I can see Paul in the list as well. Um, and here inside Gmail, you'll notice that I can either choose to respond to this person by chat, um, or here I can actually start a chat conversation with Paul. And you'll notice how it takes a subject line of the email, so morning Paul. And even typing, so on occasions when I feel that this uh, message warrants a faster communication, I'm probably going to switch to instant messaging. The beauty is I can see Paul is actually online and um, being a lazy user. And sometimes there's nothing better than getting eyeball to eyeball uh, with an individual. So I'm just going to switch uh, to actually calling Paul via video chat. You'll notice that um, all of this is happening inside the browser. There's no need to download any software. Um, a little plugin is put into the browser. Um, I click uh, a little plugin, and immediately we start a video call. Morning, Paul. How are you? Yeah, very good. OK, well, uh, I thought it'd be easier just to have a, a little conversation one-to-one -one rather than send you a bunch of emails and chat messages. So uh, I know you're busy. I won't keep you uh, very long at all, Paul. Thanks very much for joining the uh, WebEx this morning. I'll see you a little later on. Thanks very much, Paul. Take care. Bye-bye. 
and that was it. It was easy as that to actually get a video call um, going. Notice now the little icon has actually changed in this conversation. And the other thing that um, is very valuable is that any of those chat conversations that you're having are also stored in the history of the email chain. Um, so therefore, again, I can use that to reference back uh, for any conversations that we, we've actually had. And I can simply close that off and I can return uh, to my inbox. So that just changes the way that we're communicating internally. But of course, that's also available with customers and suppliers, anybody who's got a Google account. Um, some of the other nice little features that you'll find in there is that, of course, when you're getting updates uh, directly from uh, Google Plus, anybody who's sharing any content with you as well, of course, you'd expect a, a little email uh, alert there as well. Um, here you can see a post uh, that was shared with us about a user um, called Ray from uh, our Zumzum corporate page. Uh, about uh, a new certified sales specialist. Uh, having said that, um, if I wanted to share some of that content, here I can see that Bash has shared a document with Demo. Uh, and if I felt that I wanted to publish this out uh, on the Google Plus network, notice that when I'm sharing from my email, it is restricted to only people within the organization. Unless I explicitly go and actually try and share that outside of the organization. Um, this will only be allowed inside the organization. So maybe I'm not ready to let users uh, transmit this externally and go, this is our latest image. Go share and share that. I'll show you in a moment how that's actually posted um, directly on uh, the Google Plus network. Here on the left-hand side, you'll see that it's available on, on Google Plus as well. Uh, and of course, when I'm looking at this content, I might decide that I just want to click a button and view that, uh, and it just opens up inside a browser. So the beauty of that is I can receive content directly in my email. Here an example where we've got a Word file, uh, and if I want to view that Word file, I just open it directly in the browser. All of that has meant that I can actually send and receive content and view it, um, and maybe even save it in my Google Docs without ever having to leave my browser. Now, at the moment, we're just rendering this document and not editing it, but if I felt as though I want to edit that document, I can click a button and now convert this document into a Google file format word processing document, and I can start editing that document directly inside the browser. So just to resolve a few formatting issues, but apart from that, it's um, converted that automatically for um, working inside that browser, and I could choose to edit any one of those um, content. If I, for example, uh, received, uh, let's see if there's a, a presentation file here, it's even more powerful when you receive Google content, here's the presentation um, that we have inside of our email. And without leaving my email, I can choose to review that content directly. Or if I need more real estate, I can open that up in a new browser tab and immediately opens um, the Google presentation editor to allow me to go off and edit and update my presentation. Um, so that's the power of Gmail. There's a huge amount of functionality in there as well. But if I start to access my other applications, um, so for example, let's go off to my calendar to have a view of this calendar. You get this wonderful, uh, of course, search facility. You'll notice the search box across all of the Google applications. You'll always be able to search on a keyword or a phrase and find uh, what you're looking for. And I might just decide to say lunch with Brian this Saturday at 1 p.m. and throw that in. Uh, and the software is clever enough and intelligent enough to actually just put that straight into my calendar. Uh, and you'll notice here 
with this overlay mode, if I just display my demo calendar, I've got all my available calendars and my colleagues' calendars. If I want to see what Bash is up to, I can compare them side by side. And if I'm trying to schedule something with Paul as well, and perhaps Ray, all of a sudden I get this great view and I can see there are available <coughs> slots whereby a meeting would be uh, sensible. Uh, and as you'd expect with any event, demo event, uh, it's really easy to invite guests. So maybe we want Ray to come to that. We'd like Paul to come to that as well. Maybe Bash continue editing. Maybe we want Bash to come to it as well. We want to book uh, the meeting room. It's only showing you the list of anything that's available. The WebEx is available. And if I really wanted to, I could ask the software to be clever and actually suggest the time for me. So everything that you'd expect uh, from, I'm going to discard that, from a really powerful calendaring and uh, scheduling system there as well. Uh, and of course, you can go um, back to, um, you can add a Google Hangout event. Um, so if we wanted to create a new event, notice that if I wanted a Hangout, which is a Google terminology for multi-user video conferencing, when I'm creating an event, I can actually choose to go to a Google Hangout as well. So let's just uh, discard that as well. Moving over, uh, I do have my Google Drive open, but I'm just going to click it to open the Google Drive. Uh, and this started out life as um, Google Documents. And Google Docs is that word processor, the spreadsheet, the presentation tool, yeah, the forms builder, the drawings, of a set of personal productivity tools for creating content uh, inside the browser, as well as an online storage service. Um, so here you'll notice that I can upload files from my desktop, uh, and if I or any folder system that I decide to go to. At the same time, it's actually been synchronized. If we just expand that window, uh, I can choose to maybe go to um, the desktop here and find a screenshot and say, let's upload that content. And when I'm uploading content, I have the choice of either converting or retaining it in its original format. And we're going to leave that content in its original format, and there you have an image uploaded directly into my Google Drive. And of course, that supports any kind of file type. Let's just dismiss that. Um, so inside a demo folder here, once again, you'll see word processing documents. You'll see um, Excel sheets. You'll see video AVI for here example. Uh, I can have a video file installed and run that directly inside my browser uh, as content that is either being synchronized from my computer uh, or being loaded up from the desktop. Um, Outlook files, Excel files, even an archive zip file here. Um, so when you're looking at an archive file, you can see it's got Excel files in the doc in the content, and I can now expand, and if I wanted to drill down, we're not editing this, we're simply rendering this in the browser. So I never have to leave the browser to actually view any kind of file content. There is a supported list, so of course you're going to run into files that, that are not possible to render in the browser. Google's always trying to increase that list. Um, but the real magic happens is that when you look at um, existing um, content, is being able to convert that to a Google file format. And the reason you'd want to do that is so you can go ahead and actually create um, content and collaborate online. So here I can see, uh, morning, gents. Can we update the document? So being able to chat directly inside the document, uh, I can see my colleagues are already online inside the document. Um, here I can see Paul is about to start editing. If I want to see what Bash is up to, I simply click and I can see he's in green. I can see Ray is joined the document as well. Um, so as we start to edit this, 
Um, our let's change that to solution, and we can all be working and collaborating inside that document uh, at the same time. Uh, what I might want to do um, is perhaps um, take an area here as well and insert a comment. And I probably want to say, and it's automatically suggesting a contact, contact for me. Uh, can we really get it at this cost? I can simply comment inside uh, the document um, as well. Uh, and I can see my colleagues continuing to update this particular document. Um, any other user could come online and say, uh, update their comments. So, yes, we need to sign an agreement. And replies are sent to both email and are also added directly inside um, the document as well. So not only can you chat in real time, but of course, we might decide that if we're happy with that response, get the paperwork going, and we can reply to that as well. Uh, and that particular conversation is held in the system as well. Um, and if I wanted to, I could resolve that or refer back to all previous comments that are either opened or closed. And in this particular conversation, I can now say resolve. Um, and that issue is resolved. And I could reopen that if I wanted to at any time as well. Let's just reopen that and bring that conversation back into um, the world sphere for everybody to actually see. Um, so there is only one version of that document. And so now if we actually want to go and have a look at the revision, let's find out what changed and when it was changed. You can notice here that uh, when I click on this version, I do have the option to roll back as the owner of this document. Uh, but I can see that Demo updated the document here. Paul, because he's in blue, updated the document here. And Ray made some changes. And you can get very, very granular and go back to previous versions and edits and changes that are made by those users, we can actually see and review those changes as well. Um, and if I really wanted to, I could revert back to any one of those versions. So all tracks inside the browser makes life uh, really nice and easy uh, to track what's actually going on. Um, so that's the power of working um, collaboratively, real time, on content, inside uh, the browser. If I then um, perhaps want to go back and say that we've got an active project, maybe let's create a collaborative website. Um, here you'll notice I've got a bunch of websites. I'm just going to create uh, a new website. Let's maybe call it a bright, if I spell correctly, bright idea. I still need to spell that correctly. And at the moment, um, you'll notice that the site is going to be public. I can choose any one of the standard themes. Or we could, of course, um, let's start off with simple. Or we could all create our own custom themes. When I create that site, this site is currently going to be private. Uh, and if I choose to share, so in any of the Google created content, whether it's a word processor or spreadsheet, I can choose to share this with Bash. Uh, and I can decide whether he's an owner, he can edit, or he can actually view this content. Uh, and maybe I want to share that with uh, Ray, and I can share it with Paul. Or rather than type in individual uh, users' names, I can also type in a group email address so everybody at ZoomZoom Zoom actually has access to it. And type a little message. Here is our latest 
demos. Right. I can share that off. And now anybody within the organization has access to it. And of course, if I've changed my mind, I can simply click a button and remove them from the list uh, of collaborators. So going back to my site, really, really easy to edit the content. So welcome to our latest project. And go ahead and insert some content. So all the content that we've been talking about, you know, whether they're Google documents, their presentations, videos, um, drawings, charts, maybe let's go ahead and share um, the document that we've been working on. Um, here we can see the bright idea. Let's select that document and let's put it in. Make it a little bit taller and go save. And let's just save that off. We've now embedded a copy of that document live into our web page um, in real time. And that's just a link directly to our actual content. Um, but we'll just wait for the page to load. And you see that's been presented inside the browser. It's not a copy. It's not an attachment. This is actually that document being presented on our intranet site. As we said, there's lots of different things that you can actually present in there. So if we go back to, um, as you'd expect, a site that we've already created. Let's go to this demo site where uh, I've just taken some time and effort to create pages. Um, so. Let's go off to perhaps one of the news statements. So there's various different kinds of page types and say, uh, welcome to a new bright idea. This is a new project site. And again, just save that off. Uh, what we've done is literally just created a new post, whether that's a news post or a blog or an update as a page on our site. If we go back to our home page, some of the gadgets that we actually have installed, uh, you can see here recent announcements, um, recent files that we might be uh, uploading. So here, for example, there is a file store, uh, which is just a standard Google Sites page that allows us to add a file. Uh, let's take that screenshot that we were talking about, open that, uh, and add it to our site. Again, go back to our home page. Oh, little uh, and we can see that a recent document and a recent announcement has been made. We happen to embed a user calendar in here. That could be a project calendar or videos from Google Drive or YouTube. Uh, and again, when we've got the other example of uh, an embedded document there, uh, some forms as well. Uh, let's take polls. So all of this then starts to build up as a useful site that a user can add, create, <coughs> manage, and delete without ever having um, to leave um, the browser or involve anybody in IT. And of course, here, I can manage my list of collaborators that have access to this site in the same way they have access to any other document. Um, so finally, if we do move over to looking at, um, let's just uh, zoom in a little bit more there, having a look at the Google Plus um, interface here, of course, social networking uh, is changing the world for consumers, uh, and it's going to have dramatic impact and changes on businesses on the way that we actually communicate. Um, so in the Google Plus interface, of course, I can follow a news stream. Uh, and you see the content that we actually shared earlier today. There's the photo that was posted by Demo. And of course, I can reshare that, add a comment. This is Great. Let's roll it out. So you expect 
you know, to continue to send emails or do we expect users to be able to share and collaborate on content? You might notice that I can actually go and have a look uh, at news from a particular group of users. Um, so here, where of course Ray is mentioned in a post, I, again, I can post that post and go, well done. And if I mention Ray, again, he comes up in my list and go post, Ray will get an email alert that I've obviously posted. Everything you're expecting, uh, you know, the, the Facebook type experience. Um, but of course, this is all private and controlled inside the organization. So you can choose to only make content. So when we're looking at this content, uh, you'll notice that it's locked and this post cannot be shared outside of the organization. So where we're wanting to present and share, here you'll notice that we've embedded uh, a Google form directly here that allows me to say, you know, I really like um, collaborating. I absolutely love Gmail. And when I'm ready, I can go ahead and submit that form. Uh, and that's sort of data, the spreadsheet in the background, instead of YouTube video that somebody shared in terms of private content, uh, obviously reposting, uh, loving the new user interface um, on uh, Google. Um, and I can obviously view and comment on, on those images. So a bunch of different content that's been shared, and it's all been shared privately inside the organization. So imagine a new employee coming along and being able to quickly catch up with this. Uh, and in this interface as well, uh, I might decide uh, that I actually want to start a hangout. And that terminology there, I'm just going to increase the size here. So my list of contacts, we're going to add Paul. And let's add Ray to that as well. And we call this a bright idea demo. This amazing feature as well that we could, of course, um, broadcast this and record it and post it directly on YouTube if we wanted to. So um, some amazing marketing benefits as well if you decided that you want to do Hangouts on air. Um, so once again, we've got Paul joining us um, this morning. Good morning, Paul. And you'll notice that we've got the menu here on the left-hand side as well. A couple of uh, um, very, very useful features here. You'll notice that I may choose to do a screen share if I wanted to, and either share my desktop or a file um, so we could actually talk about it at the same time. Um, there are some fun aspects to it as well. You know, we could decide to play around with some Google effects. And if I wanted to uh, maybe have a little bit of fun with Paul. Thanks, I'm the boss. Okay, let's take things uh, a little bit more seriously. Let's close that off. And let's say that uh, we want to now work collaboratively on a document inside the Hangout at the same time. And now we've got this document open with us on the desktop. Uh, of course, I can invite other people to this Hangout as well. And if I try to invite Brian, you'll notice that we've actually locked down this particular Hangout. And it's only available to people inside unless I choose Allow. Make sure raised here as well. And we've invited other people to this Hangout as well. So we can share desktops. We can have a multi-user video conference um, going on as well. We can collaborate and work inside the document. There's that document that we've actually been uh, working on as a team um, with our comments inside there as well. And once we're satisfied, and we've got 
another collaborator, obviously I forgot to add Ray to that. We can get multi-user video conferencing going. Morning, Ray. Hi, thanks very much for joining us. So uh, you can have now up to 15 people in a multi-user video conferencing. Uh, this kind of solution would have cost tens of thousands of pounds. Um, and you see here, we can obviously do some desktop sharing as well instead of just sharing um, a document, I can project my desktop um, to Google as well. Um, so this would have cost tens of thousands of pounds in the past to actually implement, and now you get in this in this extremely competitive thirty-three pounds per user per year, a multi-user video conferencing suite with desktop sharing and collaboration. Uh, so we can all work anytime, any place, whether you're at home on your mobile phone or uh, on your tablet device. So anybody from any one of those devices can actually join this meeting. So gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, joining the um, conference this morning. I'll see you later on. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. And let's just exit that Hangout. And we can close that off. So really that um, concludes uh, the demonstration this morning um, on the Google Apps Suite. As you can see, there's a huge amount uh, of functionality inside the product set. Uh, it's very competitive. It means that you can change the way that you're working and work in the future today. Um, so all of this technology is available to you. Um, we're going to follow up with you uh, individually um, for any issues that you have. I'm going to stay on the line for a few moments just answering a couple of questions that the rest of you, if you, if you want to leave, I understand you've got busy agendas and thank you very much for attending. Uh, and I'm just going to um, answer a couple of questions here. Um, a good question that's come up um, is, we talk about bandwidth required to access Google Apps with a decent level of service. Um, and we do have some tools to help you to analyze the kind of bandwidth that you're going to be using um, with the Google Apps suite. What's counterintuitive um, and what's probably um, difficult for people to get their head around initially is that by moving your infrastructure to the Google Cloud, and not downloading data to your on-premise servers and products like Outlook, you're actually going to be using less bandwidth rather than more. Um, so depending on what other applications that you actually have in place, um, then the likelihood is that you're going to get more efficient usage of your network bandwidth rather than less. Uh, another question that came up, how huge is huge for the inbox? Um, huge for me is 25 gigabytes of mail storage uh, and having uh, one and a half decades worth or 15 years worth of email in there, uh, I'm still only 20% of that storage capability. Um, so when I was using Outlook, you know, I was limited to a quota of less than a gigabyte. So you know, it's massive compared to the industry average. Can you create workflows in share, uh, uh, as you can in SharePoint so a document flows from employee to manager will, with full audit? Uh, no, it's not the same uh, workflow capability. Yes, you can create workflows in Google Documents um, or um, there are add-on tools to give you extremely powerful workflow if you actually want to. Um, so there's another question there about uh, bandwidth, another question that came up about security. Um, and uh, of course your data and the infrastructure uh, is extremely secure um, with Google certifications, including ISO 27001. So not only is there data security, but physical security as well. Um, and all of that is protected 24 by 7 by thousands of engineers working at Google, so you don't need to worry about um, securing your your data. Um, so there are some videos on YouTube that allow you to um, have a look at the measures that Google put in place at some of their um, 
data centers. So just have a look at an experience of um, Google data centers. Um, let's see what other questions you've got here. If a company became, becomes committed to the Google Suite, how can they be sure the price won't rock it in later years? Um, and that's a, a pretty good question there. We'll probably follow up with an individual there. Um, if you look at Google strategy, Google strategy is to keep that price consistent and add more functionality to it rather than um, increase prices. And I think one way to, of course, do that is you can purchase multiple years if you really want to secure uh, the price for multiple years, but also analyze previous history on Google pricing, and you'll see the price has not increased uh, for many years, but there have been 200 new features added last year. All of that gets more value out of the same investment. Um, so if you really are concerned with that, then I'm sure to protect yourself, you can, you can negotiate uh, multiple year agreements there to lock down your price depends on your purchasing strategy but of course um, uh, the, the price is as advertised on the website at the moment so I think that covers probably most of the questions there and um, so thank you very much for all of you for uh, attending uh, the session this morning we'll be following up with you on a uh, on a one-to-one -one basis get your feedback and obviously uh, try and discuss with you how you can move forward. So once again, have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.